Hey everybody, Walter here with another project of mine from my top five worst performances list. This is my second feature that I ever did, uh, I'm Still Here. This came out in 2009. Um, that's when we debuted it to our friends and family and everything. Took about mm, a year, a little bit more plus of shooting uh, to, to get this one done. Uh, if you watch Noir that's up here on the channel, then you can see uh, the gradual uh, incline of uh, our production quality a little bit here and there. Um, and things just in general got a little bit better. We kind of knew a little bit more of what we were getting ourselves into this time around than the first time around. I wrote the original story and original script for this and then uh, Harry back there, the guy on the top there, <laughs> um, he plays the bad guy Julio Perez in this movie. Um, he uh, rewrote uh, some stuff and uh, it was a collaborative effort from then on. So it was written by me and him, original story by me. Um, I play the, the lead guy in this. I have some very flowing locks in here. Uh, those were the days, man. Um, <laughs> it's almost like I'm cousin it under all this hair. You're going to have to check this out. Um, so if you have any questions or comments about the, the movie, please let me know. This is a full movie. This is like a two-hour movie. So strap on in for this, folks. Um, leave a comment below. Uh, what things do you think we improved on or... Uh, um, got worse on, I don't know, from Noir, let us know, uh, in the comments, let me know, but without further ado, here is I'm Still Here. Didn't try, I'm tongue-tied I gotta be honest, I'm terrified to fly blind I try to disarm you, I play this part a thousand times The hunter's the haunted, I'm terrified There's a span between you and I Can I see it or not? When the pen in our hands And our best laid plans I stand alone on our side I wanted to have this under control A story told Open the door, I've never known You say that you hold on the sense of time You never lie They pull like a curtain, I call the shore There's no reply The distance is bad Distance is spent between you and you. Stand alone on 
Man, that shit look weak as hell. I seen kindergartners with chalk do better than that. And you always, you always on that hating shit. This shit is art, yo. I'm like, I'm like a new age Picasso man, and shit. Man, you don't even man. know who Picasso is. Nigga, yes, I do. Spell Picasso. No, nigga, that's the nigga with the funny ass shape faces, bitches, man. I'm just saying. It's Pete, man. Nigga, P. No, this ain't P. school, nigga. I -C. This ain't school, nigga. I almost graduated six years ago. This ain't school, dog. Like, I could put this shit in, like a newspaper. That is not news. Nigga, that is news. Nigga, that's Nick news, motherfucker. It's like this just in. Roscoe Jenkins painted some raw ass shit on his old that ass is house. Scribble. Scribble is nigga, what that nigga, is. Your mama some scribble. Why don't you go color in a coloring book? Man, you just tripping with no map, nigga. Hey man, what was that? Nigga, you scary ass always trying to make some shit up. Don't change this motherfucking subject. No, shut up, shut up. No, 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 I heard something. Nigga, ain't nothing over here, dawg. This place has been ghost for years. Like I was saying, nigga at night, right? Like, I'm telling you, man. Like, we were some... Oh, we got us one of these peeping time motherfuckers. Doing, man, are you some kind of narc? Yeah, I mean, you lost some. This way. Not the only thing that hasn't changed around here, huh? Nah, not the only thing. You look good, man. And a mark touch by time. Wish I could say the same about you. See you letting a whole long hair thing go, huh? You know I'm always trying new things. Like, uh, reinventing myself. <laughs> reinventing yourself? What are you, like freaking Madonna? Oh, hey, watch it, man. We are in church. Oh, I forgot. Separation of church and MTV acts, 1986. <laughs> so, uh... How's the new place? It's a good gated community. Give me a lot of time to slow down, think a lot. Good people, no worries. Not like this place used to be. So in other words, you're bored out of your mind, right? Because the Tommy Marks that I know is not happy unless he's out strutting with some hot Latin tail around state line with his dad's cherry red Chevy Nova. <laughs> hey, come on, Jay. I'm trying to hold me in front of the big man here. You know I got an image I have to uphold. 
Man, who are you trying to fool? Everybody knew you were the slyest dog in Portsville. Everybody except Mr. and Mrs. Gallagher. Oh, God. The same Mr. and Mrs. Gallagher that you convinced you're an Austrian-trained pianist just so you could give their daughter private lessons? Come on, man. I thought you were joking. That wasn't a joke. That was a plan. A highly successful one. Let me tell you, Jay, I never touched a piano before those lessons. After spending time in Lana's room, still never touched that damn thing. Hey, man. We are not going into this story right now, man. You need to be saying some Hail Marys or something before you get out of here. Still got that ball? Yep. Never leave home without it. Why, you want it back? Nah, man. Just came to check up on my baby boy, Jay. Still hanging out with Giannis? Uh, actually, uh, they left town. Their mother got sick about three years ago. This is just a mess. Uh, I see, I see. What about the LeBancas and the Brazellis? Just hanging out with them fools? Well, uh, they're gone too. They need a restart, you know? There was really, really... Nothing left for them here. Yeah, so uh, way back, Tommy. Gonna go reclaim your throne over on State? Got a few lessons left with Lana? No, nah, Jay. That stuff's yesterday. They're gone. Like all of us are. All of us. Is this what you came here to tell me? Well, you can save it. things around here, huh? Is that your reason? Is that why you're still here? Listen, Jay. Revenge isn't going to help you. You need to let this go before this kills the rest of you. Because if he wanted you dead, you'd be dead. Consider yourself lucky. Luck? Tommy, you know me a long time, and you better than anybody should understand what that son of a bitch has coming to. Look what you made me do. I just got out of church. I'll be seeing you soon, Jay. Let me get this straight. Wake me up so I can interview you for a crime scene that's not here. Hey man, it's your sergeant told me to come over to this dump. Okay. All right, let's just get this over with. I got, uh, got uh, people to sleep with. All right. Uh, uh, were you able to identify the attacker? How's that? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, he's wearing a black hat, uh, dark hoodie. Uh, maybe about five foot five. Five eight, right? Uh, uh, was he armed? Was he armed? Have you walked past the crime scene then? Have you seen her? Have you seen the victim? That should answer your question right there. 
Look at smart ass. As far as I'm concerned, I should arrest you for walking around at night. Looking really suspicious. Oh, whatever. I walk past every night to get back to my apartment. Well, then I suggest to you, you find a new route. Unless you want to end up like, uh, Miss Janet Rhodes. Just another tally mark on Portsville Slay. Yeah, because God forbid any you corrupt dogs do anything about it. You know what, as a matter of fact, I saw one of your boys roll past the crime scene like it was on some damn pleasure cruise. Yeah, well, did you uh, get the ID number? Uh, B07, I think. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Lenny. Lenny? Well, does Lenny happen to be a part of Portsville's new visually impaired unit that I'm not aware of? Because that son of a... You know what? I'll ask him myself. You! What's your problem, officer? You don't like stopping for citizens in need? Who the hell is this piss bag? Don't be running off your chops with things you don't even understand. Or you're viable to get in a world of shit around here. Look around you, man. We're already in a world of shit. The only difference is, some of us don't turn a blind eye to everything. I suggest you calm down. Adam, get this man out of my face before he does something he'll regret for a long time. You watch it, pal. You're gonna be charged with assault of an officer now, would you? Bullshit. That's the problem with you people. Why even show up? As long as you can pick up your prostitutes by night and your paychecks by noon, you are the merriest bunch in town, ain't you? Hey, can I talk to you for a second? Oh, sure, Lenny. Why not? Who do you think you are? I know you saw me. You know what, what kind of a cop, hell human being, just drives by while a woman gets murdered? Here in Portsville? A smart one. If it ain't on my doorstep, I don't see it. And for your information as what? I live on 845 Muskegon Avenue. If you got a problem you'd like to further address with me, stop by. Oh, I will. Business partner of mine would like to worry with you. Don't approach me in the daylight. At this point, I don't really have a lot of options. Busy. Yeah, well, I think your schedule just opened up, Holmes. Wow, she's pretty cute, man. Man, where the hell did you come from? Definitely not hell. How do you know where I live? You really had to ask that? Oh, yeah, right. Where you going, Jay? Back to the church. What, are you working there or something? I volunteer there. My mother's uh, insurance usually pays the bills. I feel you. Say, I wonder what all that extra cash you were making. How come you never bought us that Mustang we always wanted? What am I going to do with a Mustang, Tommy? You come to church in style. I'm sure the nuns would appreciate it. Here we go again. Come on, man. You need some laughter in your life. How many times have you laughed today? You know why I haven't laughed, Tommy? Because I haven't seen anything funny. All I've seen is me losing my mind. Well, you didn't have much of one to begin with. Honestly, Jay, I thought you'd been the first few to get out. Yeah, well, things change. No, things stay the same. People change. 
I heard you witnessed a murder. From who? Where it's pretty hot in the street. Yeah, well, last night I was walking by Countyman Avenue. Saw some girl getting jumped. A cop car rode by. He didn't stop? Nope. Just kept right on going. So what happened to the mugger? Ghost after he saw the cop car. Right after the murder, I was getting interviewed from some grease ball when this guy pulls right back up. See? That's what I'm talking about, Jay. You have no reason to be here. Your mom died three years ago. The coward who did that is still out there. You know what? No. He's right here. Right in my backyard. I see his face everywhere I go. It's been driving me crazy for three years. I promised my mother I would bring her murderer to justice. My justice. Despite my testimony, the court stood right past Perez and the evidence, even after I identified him as the murderer. He walked stone free and had one of his little minions sign a confession. And since the trial, the one thing he hasn't done is leave me alone. I could put that bastard away for life if I ever told anyone else what I've seen him do. But that system failed me once. I'm not even going to waste my time with it again. You know you're right. Your mom's murderer should be brought to justice. But do you think your mom will want you wasting your life trying to conquer the impossible? We all know what Perez did. But by throwing away your dignity and letting yourself become this emotionless monster, it's killing you too. Maybe I'm too late. Maybe you're already dead. Maybe by isolating yourself from every person that cared about the person you were, a good son, a good human being. My best friend died the day I was his mom three years ago. The past is the past, but you still have a future. Maybe Perez succeeded in killing your mom, but don't let him kill what she stood for. I understand I realize you're in pain, but sometimes you have to move on and follow wherever the wind carries you. I'll be seeing you. Got some things to do. And it's attacking time. Perez, man, what the hell? You know, this is the kind of bull that gets you mailed. What the hell you want, man? And here, Officer Fuentes, here I thought I was doing you a favor by giving you a chauffeur to ride to the park. What? You get car sick or something? These pricks? Of course got sick. Spoon food over here, pencil dig over here. That's why you just got spoon slap. May I offer you a quick suggestion? Officer Fortes. Quick suggestions, police bitch. My bad. <clears throat> Just not even. My bad. My good friend, Mr. Stax here, doesn't appreciate when people make belittling comments about his stature or his sexual preference. We all get a little vicarious from time to time. So may I offer you the suggestion to keep your jaw shut while it still functions? Understand? Are we on the same page? Same page? No, Adam. My sweet, sweet little Adam. How long have I had your back? Man? Two to three years, huh? I've always been there for you. Haven't I? Hmm? Haven't I? Yeah. I've always given you everything you need. I've given you my money. My power, my women. Tell me that wasn't enough. Thank you for answer the damn question. I didn't ask for thanks. I asked you, was it enough? It's enough. It's enough. All right. It's enough. You see, I got news last night from the streets. <laughs> 
<laughs> that you were having a little chit chat session with Jason Lonesafine? It's a crime scene. It's my job. I'm a cop. You're not a cop. You're the rat. Jason Lonesafine, in case you haven't been following the story here, that man can put me away for a very long time. Manslaughter. Homicide. Sex trafficking, money laundering, hell, pissing on public property, the man seen me do it all. And you're out here playing cops and robbers? Let me tell you something, officer. Jason Lonesafine, for some sick, twisted reason, isn't smart enough to be afraid of me. It's been that way since grade school. He's got real issues, okay? I don't want him and his lips near that department. You're in there. You're my rat. You get together. Don't worry about it. Lenny talked to him yesterday. <laughs> Lenny, your, your your partner, Lenny, Leonard Oliver. That that. Let me tell you something about that cocksmith. All right. Let me tell you something about him. He doesn't take my money. He's not part of the program. He's not one of us. He's part of the problem. Do you understand that? Now listen, his bite is just as weak as his bark. The only reason he doesn't end up in a body bag is because he's too afraid to touch us. Don't worry about it, Julio. Got everything under control. All fine. Control. You. Don't know a damn thing about control! Look around you, officer. Look all around you. You want to talk about control? This is control. Do you understand me? Nobody does a damn thing in this city without my seal of approval. Nobody breathes, sleeps, drinks, takes a shit without my thumbs of approval. <laughs> Do you understand that? I am control! Get him up. 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 Look, look, Adam. You, you, you wrapped up your tie, your shirt, Adam. You can't go back to the squad looking like that now, can you? See how good we are to you? We take care of you, Adam. I take care of you. So let me tell you something. Let me give you a little piece of advice that somebody gave me years ago that kept me on top of this junk pile that supports me. You want to know the difference between smart people and stupid people? Hmm? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Smart people don't get caught doing stupid people things. Don't let me catch you talking to loads of people. Because that's a stupid person thing. Be smart at them. Smart people stay alive longer. Pay attention to that. Let's go. And who the hell is this guy? I'm Tony. I'm Tony. Tony Thurston. Hello. 23rd Street? Yeah. Tony? Yeah. You're Rico's brother? Actually, I'm Rico's cousin, but you know, I'm Rico's family. We're good people. You know? Is this true stats? Definitely. Let me keep your mouth shut for once in a while, huh? I'm sorry, I got a problem with this. Come on, we got a city to rock. Now, watch, what am I going to move from school?
just drives by while a woman gets murdered. Here in Wardsville, a smart one. If it ain't on my doorstep, I don't see it. And for your information, it is what? I live on 845 Muskegon Avenue. If you got a problem you'd like further address with me, stop by.
kingdom. This is our home. And this ground, this ground is justice. If you don't believe in justice, if you cross justice, you get the boot. If you think you can come in and twist justice, if you think you can come in and confuse justice, you get the boot. Now this past week, I've been having police SWAT misguided justice looking not after me, but each and every one of you. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that right now, we are family! This house is not just my house, this is all your houses! We are the new breed, the new generation! And I, I am what you need! I am your leader! I am your father! Your brother! Your mother! Your priest! Your saint! You come to me! Anybody messes with you, Julio takes care of you. You understand that? You cross Julio, you get the boot. Now listen, people will come to you and try to trick your justice. They say Julio's trouble. Julio doesn't know justice. It's bullshit! You understand? Bullshit! This ground is justice. And as long as we stand firm, this justice cannot be broken. So listen to me, friend, brother, daughter, son, uncle, niece, grandfather, whatever, family. We stand firm. We stand united. We stand as kings. Round of justice. Settle your scores! Marco, did the message get through? <laughs> but is he alive? Marco, your earnings are already in route. But first, I got a question to ask you. I've been doing some readings lately, and I was just curious if you've ever run into the writings of Nathaniel Hawthorne. You see, Hawthorne once said that every individual in this world has a place to fill. And it's important in some aspects as to whether or not they choose to follow it. Now listen, Mark. I'm not one that usually base my life on the PS of other people. But this is a fact of life. Marco, you either do or you don't. That's the story of life. That's the story of America. That's the story of you. And that's the story of me. Now, Lonesophine. Lonesophine chooses to be the perennial bump on my ass that I cannot pop. He plays this role and he plays it exceptionally well. Me? I am the exact contrast. I am the icon of the city, Marco. I give it the face, the brains, and the head that it needs to operate. And they give me the body to move. 
Do you understand where I'm going, Marco? We play our roles. Well, you see, it seems to me that you've chosen a role as well, Marco. And that your role best supports that of the Portsville Police Department. I'm talking about the fact that for the past several weeks, Marco, Portsville's finest has known my every move. They know what my guys are going to wear, what they're driving, hell, what hand they used to jerk off with. Everything. Luckily, a source of mine told me I needed to turn my search party inwards. So I had that little hole in the wall you call an apartment ransacked today. And you know what they found, Marco? This shouldn't surprise you one bit. They found phone taps, pictures, videos, and a whole plethora of other little goodies to get me nailed by Portsville's police squad. Tell me, if you weren't going to the boys in blue, where the hell would you go in, huh? eBay! But Marco, didn't you just say that Violet was the most trusted asset that I had in my arsenal? <laughs> Can't you pig squeal anything else before I set you to roast, huh? <laughs> and Marco, don't worry about that. I'll be chill. <laughs> There's my girl. You know, I hear Portsville can be a very, very cold place at night. Why don't you come home so daddy can keep you warm? You're one tough son of a bitch, Lonsapine. From the way you looked the other night, I didn't expect you to make it down the steps, let alone back to your complex. What? Don't tell me after all that you don't remember anything. <laughs> no. I do. How'd you find me? I didn't. If you didn't make it to the hospital the next day, I didn't think I'd have to look for you. Lucky for you, some girl found you. Brought you in. Glimpse of a miracle in this town. Girl? Mr. Lonesping, you sustained some critical damage to your frontal lobe area. Your parents are showing symptoms of a textbook head trauma. While there aren't really any signs of fatal consequences if it's left unattended, there is enough reason for some concern. Can I leave today? Well, I would seriously advise against it, but you are free to leave on your own accord. You just have some papers to file with us before you leave. I'd like that very much. Why in such a rush? Eager to let Perez smash your head in personally this time? The papers, please, nurse. I asked this question once, and I'll ask it again. Who the hell do you think you are going around at night playing some type of superhero? You're no Superman. I've always been more in the Batman camp. No one gives a damn about anything anymore. I'm the only friend you've got. And if you want my help, you better start acting like it. Your help? Who the hell says I'm looking for it? If you don't need my help, I'll gladly let Perez's boys roll in here and finish what they left off two days ago. Two days ago? I've been out that long? Didn't you hear the nurse? Head trauma, pal. You got rock good. I'm surprised they didn't do you in. But listen, I suggest you sit back and let the PD handle things. <laughs> the PD? Let the PD handle things? You guys couldn't handle Perez if he came into the station and took a steaming pile on all your faces. Oh wait, that happens every day. Besides, if Perez wanted to kill me, he would have already done it. He's keeping me alive. Why? I've been trying to figure that out for a while. 
I guess uh, I'm protected property. You didn't look so damn protected the other night. What are you here for? Is this some type of cop work you're doing for show? Or is this signs of an actual conscience that you're trying to appease? Look, Lonesome you think it's easy watching the department getting gutted from the insides out and not being able to do a damn thing about it? Despite what you think, not all of us are pieces of shit. Don't give me that, Lenny. You don't know a damn thing about watching something getting gutted out from the inside. You all hide behind your uniforms just like you hide behind your shields, bulletproof vests, and squad cars. You're all safely on the inside, watching Perez and those like him destroy everything while other people are left to bleed and die because you're all too scared to do a damn thing about it. He's a man, Lenny. Go get him. You don't know a thing about this. There are procedures that must the be hell with procedures. He's killing people. He's a murderer. You're all scared. What the hell do you care, huh? What the hell do you care, Lonesophine? There's nobody left to give a damn. I'm still here. I still give a damn. You go on, Lenny. Hide behind your badge and your doorstep. Turn your eyes on an innocent woman murdered in an alleyway. I won't. I'm still here. I've been here. And I've been doing the same thing that I've been doing. Fight for a promise. Is everything okay in here, sir? Do you have the papers? I'm waiting for you to check out this, Mr. Longspoon, but I really would advise it. Save it, lady. You're talking a walking suicide. When you start making sense, give me a call. When you stop running, Lenny, give me a call. to uh, see if... You You're know, stuttering. Uh, Is that from the concussion? <laughs> no, not exactly. Uh, I'm Jason. Jason Lonsfield. Catherine. But everybody just calls me Cat. Cat. I saw you in the hallway the other night. You were in really bad shape. What happened? I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> I understand. I didn't mean to... No, it's okay. Uh, you know... Things are a little loose up here. Said you suffered a major concussion. You're out pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of hospitals. Yeah, I can see that. Would you like to come in for a sec? Uh, no thanks. It's alright. Give me a chance to, you know, know my neighbors. It's been a year since I moved in, so I thought now would be a good time to, you know. <laughs> yeah, very prompt cat. <laughs> Do you want some tea? Uh, yeah, sure. So how long have you lived in Portsville? Uh, my whole life. How about you? Same here. I'm ready to get out, though. This place is getting pretty terrible. Captain E.U. is a good example. Yeah. So, uh, you live here alone? Yeah. What about you? Brother? Sister? Girlfriend? No. No, I'm, uh, I'm all alone, too. My relatives don't agree with my lifestyle. They're still worried about their little girl being all alone in Portsville. I've never really ran into any serious problems, though. By the way, this tea is great. Thank you. So has anyone been able to ID your attackers yet? No. All I had in the hospital was a visitation from a very questionable cop. The whole PD is a sham here. They'll probably give you a harder time than the guys that put you there. Oh, I'm sorry. I got you talking about something you didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Uh, you know what? I better go get some rest. My head's killing me. Are you going to be alright? 
If I remember you and this uh, amazing tea in the morning, I should be all right. Sounds like a deal. Here, I'll walk you to the door. Take care of yourself, Jason. I will. You too, Catherine. Or, Cat. Good night. Good night. Monday, 1.54 a.m. Hey, Jason, it's your Uncle Phil. Um, your uh, Uncle Ronald passed away last week. Um, you know what, Jason? This is this is ridiculous. You've been you've been out there for three years by yourself. Uh, you need to give me a call. You're you're just being a selfish person. You need to snap out of it. Snap out of it. Call us. We miss you, Jason. Call us. End of messages. Got a minute? Now listen, Jason. I'm not here to small talk. I'm here to talk about something. What's that? You. Now you may think I'm a bad guy. You may think I do a lot of bad things. But you may be right. I've been testing you. Testing you? Testing your integrity. Your vigilance to stand up for what's right. And I also gotta let you know. The movement's already started. What the movement are you talking about? A few other cops, decent cops, myself included. We're gonna take Perez down. That's all you need to know. Well, what exactly do you plan on doing, officer? That's on a need to know basis. But all I need to know is are you gonna stand up with us when the time's right? If you'll pull him away, then. Yes. I'll do whatever I can. I'm gonna say thank you, Jason. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. But why, Lenny? Why now? You'll find out soon enough. Hey, Jason, wait up. Was that the officer giving you details on your condition? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, Officer Leonard Oliver. What did he say? He was apologizing, actually. Hey, well, I have to run to work. Did you want to meet for dinner at 7 at Big Daddy's Patio? I haven't been there in a long time. But, uh, no thanks. Come on, Jason. You can show me why you're such a hard ass. When you put it that way. <laughs> All right, I'll see you at 7. All right. See ya. See you at seven. Tiny? Man, you can't keep paying me these unexpected visits. Are you some sort of creeper or something? Creeper? I'm just here reading the newspaper, Jay. Nothing creeper about that, man. Besides, what are you doing here? Well, actually, I'm supposed to be meeting somebody. Who? There you going full out creep mode again, man. Don't worry about it. It's none of your business. None of my business? You gotta be kidding me. Your business is our business. Spit it out, man. Who is it? Well, uh, remember that girl from the apartment, right? Aw, oh, snap. That's what I'm talking about, Jay. You caking it with the girl next door? I'm not caking it with the girl next door. She lives next door to you, doesn't she? Yeah. Then you're caking it with the girl next door. Come on, man. Catch up with the rest of the times here. Yeah, speaking of catching up with the times, we missed a lot in the last few days. Man, I heard about that mess. Yeah, well, it's a real comfort knowing that my best friend can't come visit me in the hospital when I've been beaten near to death. Hey, how do you know I wasn't there? You are cold for a few days. 
I'm glad you're okay. Besides, I think this could have done you some good. Some good? Since when were concussions considered to be a good thing? Since you started to stop using your brain. Tommy, come on, man. Look, now's not the time for this. Enjoy your time with the girl. What's her name? Uh, Catherine, but everybody around the apartment complex just calls her Cap. Strange, Jay. What? A girl like that, hanging around a place like this? Strange, man. Yeah, I plan on answering that question personally. So where is this cat chick at? It's late on the first date? Well, she's supposed to be here about five minutes ago. She stood you up? Told you about how to present yourself to girls? Instead of showing up like a gentleman, you rolling up in like a 70s reject. This isn't a period piece, you know? Well, thanks. You know, I've always been a freaking poet with words. Hey, I'm just keeping it real. Oh, there she is. I know why I'm not wanted. Good lick. <laughs> I mean, luck, Romeo. Yeah, thanks, Tommy. Now, would you get the hell out of here? Officer Oliver. Perez. So tell me, how goes the life of uh, Portville's finest little boy? Can I help you with something, Perez? Actually, you can help all of us with something. Because you see, word on the street is you've been chatted up with Jason Lumsafi. What's it to you? <laughs> What's it to me? What's it to me is I'm looking out for you, officer. You see, Jason Lontafine, he's flying high. He's a goonie with suicidal tendencies. His words to be taken with a grain of salt. Well, it looks like you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> I don't think you understand what I'm saying here, cop. I'm not out here playing charades with you. I'm sending a very clear cut message that if you keep talking with Jason, Give me repercussions. Listen here, Perez. This is a grown man's world. You see this? It's time to man the fuck up or sit the fuck down. You listen to me, cop. <laughs> no more pencils. No more books. <laughs> no more teacher's dirty looks. I'm a whole new breed of bad motherfucker. These streets are mine. The games are over. Let's see some of that now, tough guy. Let's see what makes you so bad. Too easy, cop. Let me tell you something. When you're done running, you're done being scared. You give me a call, cop. I'm not running anymore, Perez. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to fall, and when you do, I'll be there to pick you up and help you right into a life sentence. <laughs> hey, man, now that came out your shadow! We stand team on paddle! Let's go! So why haven't you been here in so long? Well, I used to come here every Sunday after church with my mom. Sort of brings back bad memories, I guess. Why did you stop coming? Would you cover the junior meal deals? No, um, she passed away. I really don't like talking about it, but... Jason... I'm sorry, I didn't... No, it's okay. It's okay. I'd rather learn about you. So what's your life story? Well, um, about a year and a half ago, I was living with my father, trying to go through college. We were going through the typical stress of any Portsville citizen. My father was working two jobs, trying to pay for my tuition and our rent, doing everything he could to be the parent that I needed. That's how it's always been since my mom walked out on us when I was three. He was such a hard worker. 
he kept to himself, kept his business to himself, kept his problems to himself. So when the heart attack hit him last year, I was completely oblivious to the whole thing. Did he make it? No. No, he didn't. But I'm trying to finish school, though. Something I'm trying to accomplish for the both of us. So I'm stuck here. Was there enough money after his passing to... Get me out? Even with the job I'm working, I can barely afford the dump we live in. I've been saving, though. Another two months and I'm breaking free. This place is sucking the life out of me. It's just hard to keep the drive. Been no bit of roses, kid. No. No, it hasn't. Out of the house. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Mr. Popular, you know that guy? Yeah. I thought you said you didn't mix well with others anymore. He was before the anymore. An old run buddy from back in the day. We went to school together. So your father, sound like a good man. I can understand what it takes for one parent to take the burden of it all. I never knew my father. Your mother, what was she? She was a saint. Went to church with her every Sunday. Family is the most important thing in the world. She always used to say to me, "Got your family behind you. You're not." She wasn't my only family, though. I was an only child, but didn't feel like it growing up. I had plenty of cousins to keep me company. Every night I went to my grandma's for dinner. It was great because all my aunts and uncles were there. Just one big happy family. Couldn't ask for a better childhood. What happened to all your relatives? They moved away with the rest of the decent people who used to live around here. They don't talk to you anymore? They've tried. I guess I don't make much of an effort to talk to them. Why not? They usually tell me to leave here. I'm just not ready to do that yet. What's keeping you here? There's nothing. Oh, there is something. Is it someone? I guess you could say that. Is she pretty? The someone? No, no, it's, it's not like that at all. It's, it's a guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know who your sexual taste was. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, it's not a love thing at all, Kat. <laughs> I know, I know. Just joking. You should smile more. You look cuter. You really think so? I know so. Well, the food's free. Let's eat up. It's a pretty good thing you got going here. Yeah, and Nick's my restaurant rat. He's the best inside man on the south side. Wow, you can tell jokes too. I'm really starting to think I was wrong about you. get to you. Cop. What cop? Leonard Oliver. Leonard Oliver is not a cop, V. That is a shepherd who has lost his flock and is trying to swindle me out of mine. He's the biggest crook in this whole town. And if he thinks he can pull one on me, on Julio Perez, he's got another thing coming up inside that dome of his. You're right, baby. He's trying to test you. He's questioning your power. He's questioning our power. And lately, V, he has not been the only one. For the past several weeks, my phone's missed call list looks like roll call for America's Most Wanted. <laughs> I've got Colombians, third world fighters, and all sorts of illegal traders coming after me. Because of Oliver's operations, I am getting exposed day and night. Personally, I think it's bullshit. The amount of funding they're getting through the association of your weapons, it's, it's staggering. You don't think that I know that. 
I have nothing to do with the states cracking down on trafficking. This, this whole charade is because of their own sloppy conduct. And they're gonna blame it on me? I'm the damn excuse? No, not Julio Perez, not this time. everything to do with you. They're scared of what you've become, what you will become. They may hate you, but their people worship you. They want what you've got. Respect. And look at how young you are. Lately, V, I'm beginning to suspect that all this respect they've been showing me is a sick facade because I'm getting these strange individuals like Leonard Oliver showing me courage Oliver and of course that Jason Lonesome Lonesome who has he been talking to I had some of my guys look into it Come on up. Wow, this is pretty good. Guy Nicky knew. It's pretty nice too. Yeah, he sort of thought we were on a date. Really? Well, that would be nice, but you need to cut your hair. I kind of look like this old work my dad used to shave his back on. Wow, thanks. You know, it's actually not the first time I've heard that today. You know, I was homeschooled until college, so I'm sure you know this place better than I do. Would you like to give me the full tour? Sure, I'll give you a little tour of my old stopping grounds. Let's go for a ride. can tell me what Lonesome's been talking about and who he's been talking to. Heard he's been stoned up with the cops, you know what I'm saying? Like, heard he's been working with Officer Leonard and like the PD to take you down, man. Take me down. <laughs> you hear that, V? Lonesome has been living off borrowed time from me for years. And this is how he tries to repay me. What a character. <laughs> you know what? It's real simple, Julio. We cap him as soon as he walks out of that beat-down church of his. End it for good. No more hospital bills. No! You understand this, all of you. Lonesome is to stay breathing. You do not kill him. Do you understand that? That's Julio law. What's the matter, Perez? Afraid of getting your hands dirty? What's your mother's name and address? What kind of question is that? I haven't seen my mother in years. Because I need to know where to ship your body, funny man. Laugh <laughs> now, funny man! Wait, 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 wait. Slow down, slow down. Well, I right, look, I know these people, 
by this diner, right? And they see stuff for me sometimes. And they saw Jason with this girl, and they look real close, you know? So, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we should, like, teach him a lesson, take care of her, get her. Can she easily be breached? Probably, depending on what that means. Yes, yes, sir. You see, these are the things that I need to know. My world must be felt. Do you understand? Lucifer has been playing too many games with me, taking too much of my time, my power, and my money. We will destroy the ones he loves. We will collapse his world around him. The end of Lucifer will be Lucifer himself. I'll make some calls. Gentlemen, I want nothing but my most elite of monsters on Officer Leonard Oliver. He's been digging in a little too deep into my operations. It's time to lay down the boys in control. As for Lone Savine, you find the woman you track her down, and you give her a welcoming call from Perez. Keep your eyes and your ears open, because I have reasons to believe there's another little rat in my operations. I don't trust any of you. Go do what you do best. I need to talk to you about something important. Not tonight, Dee. I think you're making a big mistake going after Lenny. He's got the gun. You were too much. There is nothing that can stop me. That can stop us. And soon, all these freaks like Monsa. Oliver will be no more. You and I, V, we will reign absolute. I believe in you. So do I. Beautiful. I know. It's home. Did you and your family come here every Sunday? Yep. This was the place to be. Still the place to be. What's the matter? Look, I know you don't want to talk about this. And I've already gotten things out of you that you're trying to cover up. But something bad happened to your mother, didn't it? What gives you that impression? Your eyes. My eyes? They're just like my father's. He had those eyes once my mother left. It's the look of someone you loved being taken away from you too soon. My mother left on her own accord. She ran away. My dad didn't want her to go. He wanted to go after her. You, Jason, you look like you want to go after your mother. My mother was murdered, Kat. Jason, I'm sorry. Did they find who killed her? Any leads? Anything? There's no need for leads. I was there. I saw who did it. You know a guy named Julio Perez? Julio Perez? Self-proclaimed king of Portsville, Julio Perez? They're one and the same. Listen, I don't like reliving bad memories, uh, you know? I'm sorry, Jason. I didn't know. I have nothing to apologize for, Kat. Hey, listen, let's, uh, let's get going, okay? I gotta get back here in the morning and do some moving work. You wanna drive me back? Yeah, sure.
I had a good time tonight. Me too. Uh, just don't keep expecting those free meals out of me, you know? It was a one-time deal. Jason, I'm sorry if I hurt you by bringing up your mom. Oh, don't worry about it, you know? Sometimes it just feels good to get things off your chest. Well, maybe next time you'll let me a little more into your world, Jay. What'd you call me? I called you Jay. What, you don't like it? No, no, it's good. Uh, uh, my best friend used to call me that. Okay, Jay. I'll see you soon. Definitely. Good night. Thank you. Officer Fuentes! <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be walking around this town at night. I hear it's not a safe place. Furthermore, I don't think it's safe for you to be betting your last dollars on piffling games. You know about my conversations. <laughs> Technology. She's a talkative little bitch, isn't she? You got me tapped. I've got you protected. I just wasted two rats yesterday, one pretty sure on the same scum that was leaking me out to the PD. What the hell's going on, Fuentes? Nothing, Julio. Nothing. Nothing? You tell me nothing in this car. You get in here, right now. say nothing's going on, Fuentes. Instead, I'm seeing everything. I'm seeing everything from everybody coming against me, including your partner, Leonard Oliver, getting in my face, acting like he's a cop to me. <laughs> that doesn't sound like that's nothing to me, Fuentes. What is going on? All right, Hulo. You know you got major problems in the apartment. Things are heating up, everything's getting stirred up. I think, I think you should lay low for a little while. Lay low? Lay low, do you remember who you're talking to? I am Julio Perez. Stacks, when the hell have I ever laid low? Never. The last I checked, I always laid it fast, hard, and my way. Definitely. There's a hint of change in the department. Change? You know? They think they're smart, you know? Smart? They think that they can beat you. They think they can beat me? They think they can beat me? What are these Mickey Mouse games? This isn't Disney! I'm not a cartoon! I'm real! This is real! Listen, Julio! Lenny went to talk to Jason. I don't know what said, but ever since, he's been different. It's a change. I don't know, it's wrong. Listen to me about you and your change. I suggest you have a real hard-to-hard -hard talk with your partner. Because it would be a real shame, a real shame for something to have to happen to such a fine cop or something that could have been avoided. You think Lenny's going to listen to me? Then maybe he'll listen to me. But he's not scared of you, Julio. We have to change that, officer. Stacks, pull over! I'm gonna give you an ultimatum because I like you, okay? You get out of my town in the next 72 hours, or I kill you in the next 24. <laughs> you think about it. Well, what about Lenny? Have you ever heard the term ignorance is bliss, officer? Leo?
watch you become I got stop. He's sweet too. I bet you the porn is amazing. What do you want, Adam? What do you mean, what do I want? I'm your friend, you know? Come here to Chad, you know, kick it, you know? It's, I had a run with your friend last night. Who, Steve? Perez. Perez is not my friend. He's a punk. I hate him. We hate him. You know, he's crying. We, we don't do it, you know. I know you're on his payroll. Oh, no. I know the whole effing PD is on his payroll. We've been friends and partners for six long years. Yes. yes you know. Get out of everyone. I feel I know you the least. You, you did. Listen, justice is coming to Portsville, whether I'm here or not. Perez and everyone who's with him is going down. Yeah, well, we're going to take him down, you know, together as a team. I just want to say, you know, he's getting dangerous and, we, you know, I don't want you hurt, you know. Just, just calm down, baby, you know, a little bit. Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam. The time is coming, Adam. Whether you know what time that is or not. What the hell is this? And when it comes, I hope you make the right decision. But Lenny, how can you... I don't know. I don't know how Perez is going to react. He won't go down without some type of fight, that's for sure. Well, at least we won't have to worry about any law enforcement kissing Perez's ass. Yeah. Well, what about you? What about me? What happened to all that talk about taking Perez out? You could be around for when they're taking him in? No. I guess my mind's been dwelling on other things lately, you know? Like what? Where life goes from here. I spent so much time thinking about the past that I forgot I have a future. What? Is that sense coming out of your mouth? Is that what you call it? I can tell. You're different. All that anger starting to fade away. Why the sudden change? I guess I'm just starting to see something in myself that I haven't felt in years. What's that? Hope. Your epiphany does have nothing to do with Kat? I don't know what you're talking about, man. Come on, Jay. It's no surprise that you like the girl. You should come on out with it. That's the thing. I can't just let everything out like that, you know? What? Scared of tarnishing the Losa fame estate? No. I'm worried about losing a friend. I just have to find a way to tell her soft. Well, here's a chance. Don't mess up, Jay. Hey, what are you doing here? Thought I'd come by, see how you and the church are holding up. Well, we've all seen better days. Truer words have not been spoken. So have you ran into the officer yet? What's his name? Lenny. Yeah, Lenny. Well, I haven't seen him since that little rendezvous outside of our apartment. But uh, word on the street is, him and a couple other officers in the department are supposed to be taking down Perez and his gang. Some place where they can't run, hide, or do a cover-up. Are you going to be there? I've decided to leave this one to the professionals. Funny. You strike me as a more do-it-yourself kind of guy. So tell me, Jason, what do you plan on doing after all this? Nothing, really. You know, just stay around here in Portsville, help the church, maintenance. Is that all you want to do here in Portsville, Jason? Haven't you ever wondered what was beyond these boundaries? What you could find? I found all that I need. I'm rather content with things, Kat. How could you be? We live in the dumps. Who could we be content with that? You don't understand, Kat. You can't understand. Well, maybe you should tell me. I can't. Get on with the secrets. They're not secrets. They're precautions. Listen, I can't allow you to enter my world, all right? My heart's not a very nice place to be. Look, I know you don't like reliving bad memories. Nobody does. But sometimes we have to air them out and let them grow. Do you think it was easy to tell you about my father? I did that because I trust you, and I can tell you're a good person. You can tell me, Jason. I'm your friend. No, it's not that simple, Kat. Julio Perez is the cause for all my misfortunes. He went to the same school as me. He went to the same church as me. He went to the same everything, Kat. Listen, three years ago, me and my best friend Tommy we saw Perez beating up this kid, right? So we step in. 
We stop him. We give Perez a reason to be afraid of us. So he flees, he runs away before the cops get there, and he's on loose for a few days. So next week, I'm walking my mother out of church, and this car pulls up. Out of the car comes this guy in a, in a ski mask. He shoots my mother, killing her. She was shot by a coward. Perez takes off his mask, and of course he's staring right at me. He shot me too, but he really killed me that day. Now I'm like a ghost to him. He's afraid that I'm going to go blab to the cops. But as you can see, it wouldn't make a difference in a place like this. So now I'm just waiting, waiting for my chance. When my time comes, Julio Perez is going to pay for everything that he's done to me. You can't live like this, Jason. You have to let things go. I'm sure your family's been trying to tell you that. It's like your mother always said. About your family behind you, you're nothing. I don't have a family.
Commence phase one. They got to you too. You need to calm down. Cat was shot. They rushed her into emergency surgery. I'll take you to the hospital if you need me to. Do you want me to? All right, let's go. Expected. 
maybe a little worse. I just got done talking to the doctor. Kate hasn't improved or gotten worse since her surgery. I say it's all up to her now. Basically, they've done all they can do. I just can't shake the feeling that I brought her, brought her into this, you know. It's make one friend in three years and now she's in a hospital bed fighting for her life. None of this is your fault, Jason. This is one man's. We know who that man is. I promise you, he's gonna pay. If I have to go through every single one of Perez's gang members to do it, I will. And I give you my word. It's a cop. And it's a man. He's got hell knocking on his back door. And that door's about to break down. Maybe that door's gonna break down a lot sooner than you think. It's that supposed to be. Are you allowed to see her yet? Only for a few minutes. She's been unconscious, uh, since they admitted her. Let's head out there. Just stay away from me. When my mother died, I promised myself that nobody close to me would ever get hurt again. The way I was going to do that was to cut myself off from the rest of the world. there's no feeling in life, you can't feel pain. Thank you for showing me that I was wrong. Okay, I promise. This isn't the end of the story. Meryl. Meryl? What the hell's been going on in there? I haven't had a connection with you in about a week. You've got to pull the plug on the plan. It's over. What is it? What the hell is going on here? Perez knows the plan. We need to pull out. We've been exposed. Have you gone mad? I can't do that. No, I can't keep in contact with you anymore. Then what are you proposing we do, Meryl? Lenny, I'm going ghost. We don't have time for this divide and conquer recklessness. Lenny, you need to watch your back. Violet, wait, we have... Just for a minute. Fuentes? That's right. What the hell do you want? What the hell do I want? I want to get the fuck out of here. That's why I'm talking to you. Listen, I have two plans. One is to give you the plan. The other plan is for me to skedaddle. Where's Lenny? Where's Lenny? <laughs> you don't have to worry about Lenny. You see, you see, Julio is how you say pissed. And the problem with that is that doesn't like me anymore. And when he doesn't like someone, they normally disappear. That's why I'm surprised 
you are here, though by the looks of it, you're already gone. But since you are still here, and you wanted to help Lenny so much, here you go. Here is his plan. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, you're supposed to read it and go through with it just like you were going to. You are going to help clean the city. You're going to say, Julio, go the hell away. I don't care what the hell you do. Whatever you do, though, if you want to follow this, that's fine. But I am gone. I'll ask you one more time, Fuentes. Where is Lenny? Oh, Lenny? You don't have to worry about Lenny. No one does. By the time you read this, Officer Leonard Oliver will have most likely bit the dust. There's nothing to be upset about. I knew getting involved with the bad guys of Portsville was going to have more than just an adverse effect on me. The following is the plan that was to be utilized to finally put Julio Perez behind bars for good. All it takes is one man. One man outside of the law. If this doesn't sound like the Lenny you've come to know and love, it's because it's not supposed to. In certain extreme situations, the law is inadequate. That's where you come in. After all the dealings with Perez, all the years in the force, all the red tape, you're the only one I can trust. You, Jason, are the only one left to do what's right. Since I'm not going to be around anymore, I need a replacement there physically. Everything I've ever worked for comes to a head within these last few nights. I'm trusting you to carry out my last wishes and save Portugal from certain destruction. Good luck. Yours in the law. Officer, let her know. We apologize for interrupting the routinely broadcasted program to bring to you breaking news directly from Portsville Police Department. We are receiving word from officials that the body of Sergeant Leonard Oliver has been discovered in one of the abandoned mills on Hedgewood and Lane, brutally dismembered by what seems to be sheer force, an execution-style finish. No leads have been made and no suspects identified. Sergeant Oliver was considered an incredibly talented individual with a no-nonsense ethic and it made him both a rising star in the academy and in the force, rising to ranks faster than any other individual. Portsville, the PD, and advocates of justice will miss Sergeant Oliver greatly. An intensive investigation has been commenced and prosecution has been promised from Portsville Chief of Police. More on this as it develops. We are now returned to your regularly scheduled program. That's it, Emma. Lenny was in too long. You haven't heard the news? He's dead. Perez got him. Chief, I can't do this anymore. As soon as I get the chance, I'm out of here. That's it. I'm out. Julio, you scared the hell out of me. When did you get here? About an hour ago. You would have seen my car had you come through the front door. But you came through the side. What's wrong with you? You look like hell. Nothing. Busy counting our money, baby. How much we're going to have and how much we already have. It's a long trip to the top. It's an even harder job to stay there. I thought you'd be used to this by now. I guess not. Are you disappointed? Of course not. So tell me, who are you on the phone with outside? You saw me on the phone? How could I not? You were out there for at least 20 minutes. The stacks. We were talking about the deal last night. And what did the big man have to say about the deal last night? He went off with that hitch. In fact, 
he had to praise me as a valuable asset to your corporation. You know, that's funny. So many words coming from a man of so few. Gotta say, it surprised me too. You know, I just got done talking with Stacks about an hour ago. Oh yeah? was a setup. He said the deal never went down. He said there was no fourth deal. Our men were met up with some Peter Pan motherfucker in a ski mask. One ran for his life. Other beaten to consciousness. So I ask you one more time. Who are you on the phone with? Perez, I don't know what happened last night. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You know what you don't have a clue as to what you're talking about. You don't even have a clue as to what you're doing. So you know what? Why don't you get your boss, the chief of police on the line, and maybe he can tell you that these Mickey Mouse ass games would really work on me. Perez, don't. This is what they want you to do. You kill me and they've got you. You know what I really gotta know, Violet? I really gotta know, or should I say, Meryl Calderon? What was your boss thinking when he started this plan? Hmm? I really wanna know, but yeah, I really wanna know, how does it feel to lose two cops to the same man in one week? <laughs> Where's your backup? I have friends that can bail me out of anything. I will kill you, dump your sorry ass into the river, and write my own editorial about it. You understand that? You have nobody. Where's your Superman, Violet? Where's your knight in white armor? You have no hope. <laughs> I hate you. Such a classic. The love is mutual. Jason, what are you doing? That was the last straw. He's not running from this anymore. Listen, I understand the state of mind that you're in, but you can't act out on anger. Why not? Seems to be working out pretty well for Perez. Since whenever you wanted to be like Perez, I understand what happened to Cat was bad, but it won't make the pain leave. Then what will? Peace? Prayer? Sorry, tried that already. You didn't see your face, Tommy. In that hospital bed. It was too much like that day. You were there, you should understand that. I do understand. Cat needs you by her side right now. I don't think she wants you to do this. I know. This is the one thing I'm finally doing for myself. And what exactly are you going to do, Jason? Some things are better left unsaid. Don't let that side win. Remember the good. There is no more good. I can't let you leave. What are you going to do, Tommy? Stand there and talk me to death? Get out of the way. If only you would listen. This is your last warning. Move. Getting that scout things out. Absolutely. Stacks. Hold on a sec. Look at you. 
This is it, big man. This is the night you and I have been waiting for. I need no mess-ups tonight. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. Now you know. You know, baby. We've been working too hard for this. Everything needs to go our way. Portsville needs to go our way. We need this momentum shift. You understand? Definitely. Now look, this guy you got, is he reliable? My cousin Guido, he's very reliable. He better be what the hell we need. Oh, he is. Now, look, we got 15 minutes. You get out there, secure the perimeter. Definitely. Do what you do best, baby. This is it. Showtime. are showing symptoms of a textbook head trauma. Didn't you hear the nurse? Head trauma. That rock good. Drop it. Put down the bed. Take the fucking mask off.
the matter, Perez? Looks like you've just seen a ghost. You see, this is your problem, Jason. You're always doing something stupid. You've always been doing stupid stuff like this, huh? What the hell do you think you're doing? Why don't you think? Why don't you calm down, huh? Calm down? Think? I've had three years to think about what you've done to me. To think about what you've done to my mother. To think about how you killed my best friend. It's not all about you, Jason! You think you're the victim? Standing in your false heroics? You know what I think about that? I spit on it! It's cowards! It's people like you. People like that Lenny. You don't know anything. You treat people like me like we're nothing. And then when we do something about it, you walk. You get scared and you lock us like animals. I won't be changed! People like me. People like Leonard Oliver stood up to people like you because you, believe it or not, in that black heart of yours, are you. And you know it, I know it, Tommy knew it, and my mother knew it. And you know what, Perez? I'm going to go a little bit against your philosophy. Because believe it or not, there are things much worse than death. Justice. You see this, Jason? It's people like you that make me turn into this. I never wanted this. I never wanted these people to die. But now, it's game over. That's the tree. I knew you were the fucking rat! Everybody has their role to play. Now where's my penance? Good morning, Portsville. The time is currently 7 o'clock a.m. on this radiant Friday morning. We would like to avert your attention to breaking news coming directly from the Portsville PD and several credible sources that have been making headlines everywhere. The shocking fall and demise of Portsville's infamous kingpin, Julio Fantas Perez. The incident was radioed in late last night by Officer Adam Fuentes. Fuentes called in for backup to the abandoned Portsville Elementary School after fatally wounding Perez in what appears to have been an intense scuffle in the gymnasium area. A scuffle that included Perez, two of his henchmen, Fuentes, and a church charity worker named Jason Lonesomefiend. So is this the plan from the beginning? Pretty much. Thank you, Tommy. Couldn't have done without you. You knew I'll always be there for you. Just like your mom. Few of you will remember that Jason Lonesomefiend shares a tragic connection to the late Perez. On this very day, three years ago, Lonesomefiend testified against Perez in the fatal shooting of his mother, Mary Rose Lonesomefiend, and close friend, Tommy Marks. Though convicted, the emergence of a true guilty party weighed Perez of the crime and allowed him to walk free. No word on if invigilantism is at play and no convictions have been made on Mr. Lonesome Fiend's behalf. And with what many now expect to be the end of Perez's empire, Portsville PD has begun to reorganize the attention of their personnel. Sergeant Fuentes has been promoted to the top of Portsville's special unit, replacing his close friend, 
and former partner, the late Sergeant Oliver. Fuentes' first move has been to call home more than a dozen PD members that were selected to go undercover and strive within the dangerous world of Perez for almost two years. Sergeant Oliver created the plan in his third year of service, deploying the most committed individuals Portsville PD had to offer in order to gain evidence on Perez. Many are returning home for the first time in years today, while officials are still searching for Agent Merrill Violet Calderon. Calderon was assigned to be the closest operative to Perez, working within his infamous inner ring. No contact has been made with Agent Calderon since last Tuesday. We'll be reporting on this all day, with direct word from the Chief and Mayor of Portsville on what this means for the future of our city. We now direct our attention to weather, where it looks like the signs of fall are slowly but surely slipping in as summer begins to wave goodbye to Portsville.